Joe Hamilton, um, Pilgrim's Market here. Um, Ken, uh, this evening, um, Ken Rosenrow is going to be speaking, as you know, about the dangers of genetically modified foods and what we can do about them. Um, just real briefly, um, a history of Ken. He is the editor and the publisher of the non-GMO organic and non-GMO report since 2001. Yeah, since 2001, so he's really had his hands in this issue uh, for a number of years, and uh, I'm very, very excited to hear about the, the recent developments that uh, he's going to be sharing with us. He's also authored a couple other books um, that he has here uh, this evening. If you're interested in them, he has them over here, and uh, he'd be happy to uh, sign them for you at, uh, at the end of the talk. And really, that's probably uh, about it uh, for me. If you would just uh, join me in giving uh, him a very warm welcome. Project that has been started uh, called the Non-GMO Project. It was a grassroots initiative. It was started by a natural food store in Berkeley, California, the Natural Food Grocery. And they started, they started this letter writing campaign to food manufacturers, food manufacturers asking them to verify that their food products were non-GMO. And that's the purpose of the project, is to verify the non-GMO status of organic and natural foods. So this, this grassroots project started small, but more and more retailers got involved. There were 300 plus retailers that have signed on to it. And it also got the backing of Whole Foods Markets and United Natural Foods. Whole Foods is the largest natural food retailer in the country, and United Natural Foods is the largest distributor, natural food distributor. So having those two big companies behind this project really gave it some uh, momentum. And some leading organic companies who have gotten behind it also. So what is the Non-GMO Project? It's, it's aim, as I said, is to verify that, not, that organic foods and natural foods are non-GMO, can even be applied to conventional foods also. So one of the things that it does it defines what non-GMO is, as a, it creates a standard for what is non-GMO. With organic, we have a standard. There's a definition for what organic is, but there wasn't one for non-GMO. But this non-GMO project creates a standard that defines what non-GMO is. And it's a verification program. Uh, it has what's called identity <coughs> preservation to, ident to preserve the genetic integrity or identity of food from seed to finished product. There's also GMO testing involved and traceability back to the field. So these are some of the companies that are involved participating in, in the non-GMO project. You see Lundberg Family Farms, some of these brands you probably recognize. Nature's Path Foods, Eden Foods, White Wave, Whole Soy, and there's Whole Foods, and then just this past week, some more companies, Kettle Brand, which is in my area in Oregon, as well as Turtle Island Foods, Strauss Organic, New Chapter, they make supplements. So these companies are now getting their products enrolled in the non-GMO project to be verified as non-GMO. So there are more than 600 products that are going through this non-GMO verification to give consumers the choice to purchase non-GMO foods because, like I said, we don't have mandatory labeling in the U.S., so we need to take a proactive approach, and the non-GMO project is the most proactive approach we can do right now. So in this fall, you'll be able to see some food products uh, with this non-GMO project verified seal on them. These will start appearing in the fall on some food products. I'm not sure which products will start appearing, but will be starting to see this, and I think as more companies become involved, this will be a common uh, seal you would find. So some other positive things that are happening, there's continued interest in organic foods, even with the recession, I hear that you know, people are still buying, buying organic foods. I think there's some hope with a new administration. Kathleen Merrigan <coughs> is the Under Secretary of Agriculture at the Tom Vilsack, she has a number two position. She's very supportive of organic foods. In fact, she helped to write the National Organic Program rules that became law in 2002. 
She's a big supporter of organic foods, and having her as the number two person at the USDA is a very positive thing. And, and organic agriculture is getting more funding, more and more government funding, which is a real good thing to see. So, what can you do to avoid GMOs and eat healthy? One of the key things is, is to avoid conventional processed foods. Because as I said before, a lot of these foods contain ingredients from genetically modified corn and soy, canola. So some of the ingredients, uh, lecithin, corn oil, soy oil, corn starch, corn flour, even cottonseed oil, uh, canola oil, all these ingredients are found in a lot of processed foods. You go into any, a supermarket and pick out a processed food and you'll see a list of these types of ingredients. Because we grow so much corn and soy, we got to do something with it. So it, it's processed into all these ingredients. And eating organic. Eating organic is still your best protection against genetically modified foods because GMOs are prohibited in organics. And you can go to the Non-GMO Project's website and they have a consumer pledge that you can sign on to to support uh, the production of non-GMO foods and non-GMO label foods. So you can sign on to that. Um, buying fresh, local organic and supporting your local farmers, your local organic farmers. You can grow your own. Gardening is a, seems to be a trend sweeping the country now. We have uh, uh, First Lady planted organic garden at the White House. Even uh, the USDA has their own organic garden as well. So that's, that's a good way to avoid GM foods. And also, as I mentioned, supporting GM food labeling, demanding the right to know whether you're eating genetically modified foods. This is Labeling is really key because if labeling is implemented, it would basically it would basically kill the market for genetically modified foods. The food manufacturers, as soon as labeling happened, food manufacturers would say, "We're not going to buy any more genetically modified corn or soy," and that would force the farmers to stop growing them, and Monsanto would have to stop selling the seed. And I was telling someone earlier, these big companies have a, a huge impact. The, there were genetically modified potatoes that were grown years ago, but the fast food company, fast food chains, Burger King and McDonald's killed the market for genetically modified potatoes. So they're, they're not even grown anymore. They said, they told, at one point, I think it was around 2000, that they, they were concerned that consumers would, would not want to eat their french fries because the the genetically modified potatoes were being processed to make French fries. So they were concerned about consumer black backlash against this. So they told their suppliers, we're not going to buy any more GM potatoes. So the suppliers told the farmers, stop growing GM potatoes. And Monsanto lost the market. They couldn't sell seed anymore. So the big companies at Kraft Foods said, we're not going to buy any more GM of corn. It would have a huge impact. So as consumers, we need to let these big companies know that, you know, if, if you want us to continue buying your food products, you have to stop using GMO corn or soybeans. So we can have a big impact. We can also contact Congress, the senators and congressmen saying, we want genetically modified food la foods labeled. We want the right to know whether we're eating genetically modified. So there's an organization called Citizens to Label Genetically Engineered Foods. And their website is here, www.gmfoodlabel.org. And there's an a new initiative that has been started to, to introduce another bill to label genetically modified foods. There seems to be some momentum behind it. They have a um, former congressman who's working on it who has some influence. And they're hoping that this could get a little bit further than the previous bills did. So we'll see what happens. And mainly just staying informed. As I mentioned, most American consumers are not aware of this issue. So the more you're informed about it, the more opposition there will be to it. That's what happened in Europe. The Europeans are very informed about this topic, very educated. And as a result, GM foods are not, not accepted in Europe. 
So there's some websites you can go to for more information. Our publication, we have a website, www.non-gmoreport.com. The Non-GMO Project has a website. The Institute for Responsible Technology, Jeffrey Smith, I think he spoke here last year. He has some materials here. He's written some books about, about genetically engineered foods and the dangers. Uh, the Center for Food Safety has, has spearheaded some lawsuits against the USDA to stop. They've already stopped genetic Roundup Ready alfalfa from being produced. Now they're working on sugar beets and other issues. They can go to their website as well.